there my fishy friends, my name is Peter and today I'm going to try and answer the question that's put on everyone's mind and that is, are we going to get a sockeye opening on the Fraser River this year? Maybe some of you don't care, well, if you didn't care you didn't click on this video, so <laughs> if you're watching, you want to know and I'll give you my prediction right at the beginning, I'm not going to waste your time and make you wait till the end of the video. My prediction is that a sockeye opening on the Fraser River this year is quite likely. Nobody can tell you for certain, but I think it's likely that we will get an opening. And the other part of the question, of course, is when are we going to know? Well, the panel meets every Friday, or they publish their results and reports every Friday. And so I would say we're either going to find out August 5th or August 12th whether there will be an opening. And if I had to guess, I would say it'll be August 12th when we actually find out whether things are going to open. I say that because in 2018, when we got the last opening, the announcement for the opening was made on August 7th. And I wouldn't say that they're going to want to make that announcement any earlier than the 7th. Uh, the people in charge of this fishery are, I think, you know, going to be on the cautious side and we're probably going to have to wait till the 12th to find out for sure. Now let's talk about all the data that has led me to this conclusion. I think it's important for everyone to understand how these decisions are made. So we have a thing called the Pacific Salmon Commission, which is a federal um, sort of bureaucracy, if you will. It's a, it's a panel of people. And I don't know all the ins and outs. I don't have any friends on that commission. I, you know, I've never been to any of their meetings. I can't tell you exactly how things happen, but when the sockeye are in season, this panel of experts meet once a week and they go over all the data and they make decisions about this fishery. The decisions they make are rooted in what we call the Pacific Salmon Allocation Policy. And that is a policy that was written by the government some 30 years ago or so. And what they did at the time is they studied the economic importance of all five salmon species that we have. And this study concluded that to maximize the benefits to British Columbia from these salmon, uh, Chinook and Coho salmon should be left for the recreational sector and Chum, Pink and Sockeye should be left with a priority for the commercial sector for commercial fishing. Whether you agree with that finding or not, well, it is what it is. I would also say that if they did that study again today, they would probably find something different. Tourism and guiding and guided fishing is such an important part of the British Columbia economy that I would say by now it far outweighs what commercial fishing fleet we have left. Part of the Pacific Allocation Salmon uh, Pacific Salmon Allocation Policy is also the the various stakeholder groups. So we have commercial fishing, we have uh, the United States commercial and uh, what they call Treaty Indian fisheries. So some of these stocks that are coming to the Fraser are intercepted south of the border. And the Pacific Salmon Commission has some say as to whether those openings should go ahead because it's our fish that are being intercepted. And that is part of the Pacific Salmon Treaty, yet another complicated piece of legislature that was hammered out way long ago and may not reflect current realities. So we have the stakeholders, the commercial fishery, the American commercial and First Nations fishery, we have the First Nations of the Fraser River, and we have the recreational anglers. Um, I'm not going to get into the politics of all that as much as I want to. Um, well, okay, you know what? Let's get into the politics. It's not like, you know, I'm gonna lose subscribers because you don't agree with me, right? We, we're allowed to disagree. Uh, I, me personally, I would much rather see these fish in the hands of the First Nations who have been here since time immemorial than in the hands of the commercial fishing fleet, which is to a large part owned by large corporations, namely um, Jimmy Pattison and his group. Uh, I think making a living off the ocean is a wonderful thing. and. 
if you're a commercial fisherman that's been doing it your whole life and your grandfather did it and your father did it, I think it's a wonderful way to make a living. I just think that um, as society has progressed, British Columbia stands to benefit way more from the commercial guides than the commercial fishermen. So um, all the lodges and all the boat maintenance and all that, maybe all these people. Well, you know what? I'm digressing. Let's get back to the sockeye. We have the First Nations who always get first priority when there is an excess of fish to be caught. Um, after them is the commercial fleet and after them is the recreational sector. So when it comes to Coho and Chinook, we are first on the list after the First Nations and ahead of the commercial fisheries. When it comes to sockeye, chum and pink, we are last on the list as recreational fishermen. So that's the policy, don't get mad about it. These people making these decisions have to make them based on that policy. And uh, there, there's really no arguing with it at this point except for writing to the politicians and having that whole policy re-examined. But the people making these decisions, uh, they have this set of guidelines and on that set of guidelines, the recreational angler is last in line for any sockeye openings. So that's one factor that goes into it is the allocation of, of the excess salmon. The other part of it is the numbers of salmon and the desired escapement. So basically, if you want to put it in a nutshell, are there enough fish for the run? Is there enough to harvest yeah, without damaging the run? And this year that looks quite likely. If you look at the data from 2018, in 2018 the forecast for the sockeye run was 13 million and by the end of the season 12 million had actually shown up so the run was slightly smaller than the forecast. This year's forecast by the Pacific Salmon Commission is a roughly 10 million sockeye and judging by the numbers coastwide I would say it's a safe bet that we're going to get more sockeye than forecast. The North Pacific is this great big black box stuff goes out we don't know what's gonna come back but we have some really good preliminary data that shows us that the survival conditions for sockeye out in the ocean were really really good these last four years so we have to the south of us Columbia River has had a record return of sockeye this year to the north of us in Alaska uh, Bristol Bay has had a record return of sockeye this year um, the the returns of sockeye up and down the British Columbia coast have also been quite good. And the first sockeye to return to the Fraser have already passed through, and that is the early Stewart run. So the early Stewart salmon, uh, early Stewart sockeye, they go way to central interior British Columbia. So they go past Prince George, up the Nechaco, up the Stewart River, and they spawn in the upper Stewart River. And also they travel past, like through Stewart Lake, all the way up Takla River and they spawn in the tributaries of Takla Lake like they go really way far up there so in order to make it up there on time they start really early that run was forecast to be about hundred and twenty thousand fish and already they've counted about two hundred fifty thousand fish so the return of the early Stewart sockeye was a little bit more than double of the prediction so that's another good sign. So all up and down the coast, returns are better than expected. So I'd say it's not a stretch to say that returns on the Fraser will also be better than expected. So this is the main piece of data that leads me to conclude that we are going to have an opening. The other things that are considered in these decisions are water levels and water temperatures. And so this year, both of those are looking pretty good. Water was a little bit high, which may have prevented some stocks from uh, easy passage up the Fraser Canyon, but the Fraser is dropping quickly. So we're gonna have good water levels for the sockeye going up, and we should have good temperatures. So all this extra water has kept the water temperatures quite cool. Why is that important? Well, cold water carries a lot more oxygen than warm water, and sockeye, have very little body fat so they have a limited amount of energy to get up the river to where they need to go they're not like Chinook where they come up with this thick layer of, of fat on their body they come up with very little fat they're a fairly fragile fish 
And if they have to spend an extra week swimming up because the water temperatures are warm, they just don't make it. We get really, really high mortality. And I don't remember exactly what those temperatures are where things start to get serious, but you know, I think, I think once you hit about 18 degrees, every degree above that results in a big jump in mortality. So when the water gets too warm, it just doesn't carry the oxygen. It's like they're trying to sprint at high altitude and it just doesn't work out for them. So that's why water temperatures are critical. And that is, I would say, the one thing that could throw a wrench in the works here is if we get another really prolonged heat wave, it's going to bump those water temperatures up and the fishery might get shut down. I would really encourage you to have a look at some of the bulletins published in the past and maybe for this year. And at the end of every season, they publish really accurate data as to what each fishery took. And if you look through that, I think it might end some of this grumbling about who gets what and how it's not fair. If you look at 2018, and again, I'm going just from memory here, there were roughly, I think it was somewhere around 5 million sockeye caught by all the user groups combined. Uh, maybe it was 4 million, I, I forget exactly. But out of those, um, the United States took some, and I forget what those numbers were, but roughly speaking, the commercial fleet in British Columbia caught about 2 million sockeye, and the First Nations of the Fraser River took about 1 million sockeye. Now, those are reported catches. You can argue whatever you want about that. Uh, but still, you know, for those of you who think the First Nations just take everything, well, they got less than half the fish that the commercial fleet got. And the estimated catch for the recreational sector in the river, so in-river catch for sockeye salmon in 2018 was 67,000. So really, out of all the user groups, the the recreational anglers take the least and we don't really have a huge impact on this run so but still it's it's something right 67,000 fish is a lot of fish so um, in 2018 was my first time ever fishing for sockeye and I had a great time the Fraser is such a huge place it feels so different from this little river that I usually fish and yeah, it was kind of awesome to go out there and I would paddle my kayak out every day after work. I ended up going out about 20 times while it was open and I caught 18 sockeye and no springs. So I had a great time. 18 sockeye, that's a lot of fish. Like I vacuum packed those things beautifully and we ate them for the next year and a half. Uh, amazing sushi, it really is. So I have high hopes for this year coming up. If you made it to the end of the video, uh, thank you. Thanks for watching. Uh, not a lot of people make it here. I, I get all the statistics after the fact and, and very few people watch all the way to the end. I would say less than a third. So uh, if you have any questions or if I missed anything, please write me a comment and I will try to elaborate. And again, the links are in the description. So I'm going to link stuff to the Pacific Salmon Commission. I'm going to post the link to the Pacific Salmon Allocation Policy. And so you can do this research on your own. It's all public data. I don't have any special connections. And um, yeah, I would encourage you, the more you understand this fishery and what actually goes on, I think the happier you'll be about the whole thing. Because on Facebook, of course, you get all the negative comments and, and all the grumbling. And a lot of it is just not founded in reality. So I would, I would encourage you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.